is Chad Adams with Skelton, Kansas, and this Missouri. And this is a support video for a blog post I made at our website, www.skeltonkey.com. Um, in that blog post, I advocate for some of the reasons why I think a developer should have their own toolbox of the techniques they commonly use. Um, I'm not going to go through the, the pros and cons of why I think you should have a, a toolbox, but rather in this video, we're going to outline uh, some of the ways you can kind of get started and some techniques to use for, for developing that toolbox. So let's get started. Before we get into the techniques, let me do just a little bit of housekeeping. I do mention some tools throughout this video, and so I wanted to give you the web pages for those tools before we went any further. So um, here they are, Script Master, TextMate Bundle, uh, Clipboard Explorer, FM Clips, and Clip Manager. So just uh, pause the video if you need to see those a little further, and now let's get into our... Okay, step number one. Um, in the blog post, I advocate for three kind of ways um, that you can start creating your toolbox. The first one is to just create yourself a toolbox file. So using FileMaker, we would have a file and we would call it whatever we want, but you might have it open to the side whenever you're um, developing your, the solution that you're working on. And in this file, the idea is that you would store some commonly used scripts or maybe just snippets of scripts, of commonly used script steps. Um, maybe some default fields that you use in every table. Um, maybe uh, you have a repository of custom functions that are that are common and stuff. And instead of those being spread across the multitude of different projects you've worked on, um, you've collected all the, those common ones into one spot. Not to say you're going to use them on every project, but they're common enough that you you use them. Um, so, for example, if we go into Script Maker, we might go into you know, let's say you've developed a really great print routine. Whenever you want to do a report, you've got one script you can call that takes the user to, to preview mode and uh, ask them if the page setup is right and lets them adjust that and, and all the, the stuff that might go into a, a sample print routine. And so you, you can simply copy this out of your toolbox and go paste it into your new file and there's the script. So technique number one is as simple as that. Um, having yourself a toolbox file that you can copy and paste out of and that's where you keep everything. Okay, technique number two. This is going to take advantage of the fact that FileMaker, when it copy and paste elements, it uses XML to store those in memory. And we can have access and store those XML items in text in some other place and just retrieve them whenever we need them for our toolbox. So for example, I've got some scripts set up here that use the um, ScriptMaster plugin to grab, so let's say, a default field set. So I can run that script, and then whenever I go into Manage Database and I do Sample Table, I can paste and I'll get my default set of fields that I might put into every set of every table that I use or something of that nature. Okay. Similarly, I can instead of you know, storing those in a script, which I'll show you that script in just a second, uh, maybe I want to use the TextMate bundle. And so here I've got a looping script. I can select all of that and then go to the FileMaker bundle and say load that snippet to the clipboard. And when I do that, then I can go to my scripts, create a new script, and paste, and I'll get a default, you know, kind of generic um, looping set of script steps that I might always use for, for my loops, or commonly use for my, for my loops. And so that's just two examples of how you can store the data as XML, load it into your clipboard, and then paste it where you need it. Um, let's go take a look at the XML I did real quick for the default field set. So it's just simply loading that and grabbing it from ScriptMaster. And you can see the XML is here. I did have to do a replace on this in order to get it in here, so uh, before putting this XML into this calculation, I did a replace with the backslash quote to get all the quotes out so it didn't break. But uh, you know, all that's documented in other places. My point is to show you some examples of how you can use the tools available to you to generate your own toolbox. Okay, so just to summarize a couple of those things. Um, the idea here is if you're using ScriptMaster plugin or the things I was just showing in those examples, the idea is you've copied those scripts into your project so they're available to you as just a, a keyboard command, if you will, um, to grab that information and go with it. It's not stored off in a separate toolbox file that you also have open and need to access, which is sometimes difficult if you've already got Managed Database open or, or you're editing a script or, or whatever. Um, at the same time, the TextMate bundle offers the advantage of being able to copy the things into clipboard board um, for you, even though you may already have a, a script open. If you have a script open in FileMaker and you're trying to run another script to the copies the clipboard, uh, FileMaker gives you an error message saying, hey, you've already got this script open, you want to save it and all that stuff. So anyway, there's two other options for creating your
The last techniques I want to talk about real quickly and just briefly are FM Clips and Clip Manager. And I showed those URLs earlier. I'll ask you now to go take a look at those if you're more interested. And I just want to say that they are in fact third-party solutions that allow you to copy uh, snippets of your, your system or, or file scripts and fields and layouts and things that you like into their system and access them through the clipboard in similar ways we've been talking about. But they are third-party uh, systems and they do suffer a tad from the, the issue I mentioned in the blog where um, you have to learn a little bit of their technique and incorporate that into your own workflow. Um, they both do a really good job of, of making that as painless as possible, but there is some modifications you have to make to the way you work to use those tools. So go check those out as the third option for having your own tool. Okay, for those of you who have stayed tuned to the end here, I've got an extra technique, um, a bonus technique, if you will, that I don't really mention in the blog post, but I wanted to throw in the video for you. Um, and that is to take advantage of your um, custom functions. So custom functions aren't just for expanding what FileMaker can do. You can also just make the functions easier for you to type ahead to or to use or whatever. So, for example, I'm using a get script parameter here and a get last message choice and get script result on the last one. And so I'm not necessarily advocating this as far as naming conventions and, and techniques and whatnot, but the idea is just to kind of help you get to that aha moment where you can say, you know what, in custom functions, I can you know take the things I use all the time and rewrite them in my own language if need be, just so I can have access to them. I think as long as you document that somewhere in an opening script or a, a readme type uh, you know comment somewhere in your, in your system that tells the next developer what you're doing, I think that's perfectly fine. Okay, so let's take a look at how we might actually use those custom functions in our scripting, just so we can you know, be clear about how this is, this is working. Um, so in this top part, I'm going to um, do those, those techniques I showed using the, the traditional method of how I might do it. And then the bottom part, I'll, I'll use the custom functions. Okay, So I just showed this dialog to the user, and now I need to check the result. So I might do something like, you know, if... Um, get last message choice, scroll down to it, because um, I can't type ahead here because they all start with get. So get last message choice equals one. All right, and if it equals one, then I want to perform this script, which already has my script parameter, and then after that script runs, let's, let's just go take a look at that script. You know, I'm setting a, a variable here to my script parameter, so that might be something like, um, I realize that you can't see that on the screen, hold on. And so that might be something like get script parameter. There it is. Okay. Or maybe you type this out and you're you're you know really fast at typing that and you don't point and click. But I point and click sometimes. So there we are. We've saved that now and we've got a script parameter. And now that we've done that, we need to get the result. So we come in here and we specify value. And we go get, and we say script result. There it is. And so we've done the whole series using the actual get functions. Okay. So now let's do the same thing down here with the same set of script steps and use our um, our custom functions. Okay. So here I would say um, if the glm get last message equals one. And it recognizes that as a function because I typed it in my custom functions and, and it's checking for that. Then I would send off my parameter there. And let's go take a look at that script for script subscript two. And here I would set my variable to GSP, which is just get script parameter. And I'm done with that. And we'll close that one and go back to my main script. And then here I can get the script result with GSR. And I'm done there as well. So a little easier sometimes to type and get where you're going if you use those custom functions and something like that. So again, just trying to get that aha moment to, to come alive and let you uh, have some tools in your toolbox to go a little faster um, in your development. Um, so, to wrap up, um, I hope that you found this useful. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email um, chad.adams at skeletonkey.com. Thanks.